In this lesson, I'll show you several examples on how to simplify radicals with negative radicands. In case you forgot, the radicand is the part that goes within the radical. And if a radical has a number out here, that's called the index. Also keep in mind that when it comes to negative radicands, the property, the square root of a times the square root of b is equal to the square root of a times b is only true for real numbers. So you can't do this if a and b are negative. Instead, you have to separate the negative part as the square root of negative one times the square root of a and switch that to the letter i. And only then can you use this property. Let's do some examples. Simplify the square root of negative one, zero, eight. So the very first thing that I'll do is write this down as the square root of negative one times the square root of 108. As mentioned earlier, this factor will be written as i and we have to find the square root of 108. It's not a perfect square, but we can break it down so that it does become one. 108 breaks down in two, 54 times two. Neither of these factors are perfect squares, so let's break it down even further. 54 can be broken down into 27 times two times two, that part right there is that second two. Two times two is four, 27. 27 breaks down into nine and three. So we have nine times three times four. Nine is a perfect square, it's three. So is four, it's two. Three on the other hand is not. So we have six times the square root of three i. That's the answer to question A. Let's move on to B. So again, I'll rewrite this as the square root of negative one times the square root of positive eight that's the same thing as saying four times two and four is a perfect square. So we have two times the square root of two, that is the letter I. For this, it's the same thing. We break it down as negative one times the square root of 18. 18 is nine times two, nine being a perfect square becomes three. So we have three, the square root of two and also I. As you can see, you can factor out the square root of two times i, and you get two plus three, which is five. So your final answer should be five times the square root of two i. For question C, we have to remember what I set up here. So you can't combine the radicands when they're negative. So this part we know will break down into two times the square root of two i, and that, we learned, breaks down into three, the square root of two, i. Multiplying these out, six, two times three is six, the square root of two times the square root of two is two, and i times i, that's like saying i squared, which happens to equal negative one. Multiplying these out, we get negative 12. In case you're curious as to why that's negative one, just pretend that i, reverting it back to its radical form, square root of a negative one raised to the power of two. Remember the laws of exponents, negative one raised to the power of half, raised to the power of two is like multiplying half times two, which becomes one. And that's why we end up with negative one. Finally, in question D, it looks like the quadratic formula, but it's not, of course. We have a negative six plus the square root, negative six raised to the power of two is 36, and multiplying these three numbers out, we get minus 40. At the bottom, we have two. 36 minus 40 is negative four, so we have the square root of negative four, which is equivalent to the square root of four times i. That's a perfect square, we have two i. So negative six plus two i over two, we can continue by taking this two and making it a denominator for both of the terms above. Negative six divided by two is negative three, and two divided by two is one, so we end up with negative three plus i. And there you have it. That is how to simplify radicals with negative radicands.